Well, hello there, YouTube. The time has finally come. This is uh, this is gonna be my world for for quite a while. I'm I'm afraid to say. That's <laughs> focusing on that. One of the dogs. They'll always follow to a certain point and then they'll then they'll stop. But this is what we've had. I uh over the weekend it was uh pretty much like this. Yesterday was a series of massive massive downpours. But anyway, this is Monday the 20, what is today, the 26th? Yeah. But, unfortunately, my vlogs are gonna, are kinda, gonna become this kind of a nasty looking thing. But, uh, anyway, I, I don't know what I'll come up with today. Surely something. Man, that aluminum uh, pole that I put underneath this thing is uh, it's pretty heavy. It makes the camera heavier to hold. That's all right. Watch this, here comes a log truck. Never ending log trucks around here. Never, never ends. Sorry, you're probably getting some wind noise because I I got that window crack in my old, my little boxy Honda Element. Oh, this looks pretty through here. If I can't show you guys from a, from a bike, the only problem with pointing the camera out the windshield of your car is it tends to, uh, tends to focus on the water on the windshield. Look at this, it's pretty. Kelly's got a doctor's appointment, and uh, come rain or shine, I have to ride because we just gave away our our uh, Honda Accord to one of my kids. And I'm quite sure that it's not the safest thing in the world to be vlogging and driving at the same time, or at least I haven't done it enough to have any coordination. And for the most part, you know, I try to try to pay attention to what I'm what I'm doing and not the not the camera. Uh, I'll give you guys the the old speech thing where you you pan across and you appear to be making eye contact from time to time. <laughs> um, I'll see what I can come up with at work today. There's always something going on. Whether uh, I've uh, got enough bravery to uh, to <coughs> excuse me, record it or not. And the other problem is the is the kids blasting them radios. And the one kid blasting, he's got this Pandora, I think, channel that plays like five to seven songs. And it's the same songs all day long, repeating themselves non-stop all day long. And they are horrifically annoying. You know, and I, and I try to be the nice guy, and you know, you know, let everybody have their little their little comfort thing. But you know, at some point, you know, I'm gonna have to tell this kid, look, you have to find another channel or put them damn headphones back on, because uh, it's really annoying. And it's that, you know, a lot of it's got that screaming thing where they whoa, whoa, sounds like some satanistic bullshit anyway but I don't want to sound like the old old fart in the shop you know the old grumpy guy I had guys that I worked with that uh in the 80s that couldn't stand any 80s music at all and uh you know we had it on a regular station and uh, even when we'd uh you know we'd put it on the classic rock and stuff like that 
that, there were still songs that irritated him. He just did he just wasn't a big radio guy. But uh, remember, he used to think of, you know, grumpy as a grumpy old fart. Well, uh, I'm his age or more now, so. Anyway, I've rattled on for, for eight minutes here. I'm uh, almost to the freeway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce out, and uh, we'll see what we come up with for the day. We'll come up with something. Gotta have something for a blog, right? These may be the most horrifying things ever. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll see see how they edit out. But anyway, I'm gonna bid you adieu, and uh, I'll turn you around and let you see what I'm what I'm driving in as I bail out on you. All right, we'll talk to you later now. So hey there, YouTube. I told you I'd come up with something to do today, and uh, I did. I did an oil change on this, but uh, I'm not putting the uh, covers on because she's got a bad. Get my flashlight out here. He's got a bad shock, and you can see all the oil oozing off of that thing, and the fact that she's just a springboard back there. So, the I take the trunk off to do it. That's the the way they tell you to do it, and you can actually reach in there and get to the bolts and take it off without taking the trunk off. But with this crane that we have here, I just roll it over, lift the thing up, push it back out of the way, put the uh, um, trunk on this, just kind of slide everything out of the way. And the shock's really easy to get to, so uh, that's why I'm leaving this thing apart and. He's getting pretty close on the tire too. This is this is a hour bike it's a trade-in. But you can see he's he's on the 50% wear bars on it. It it needs a tire. So um, even though the belt was within specs, I'm I'm it's on the low side of specs, so I adjust it. But I'm not going to because uh, I'm gonna have the wheel off the back. Uh, that's it. Other than that, this thing's in great shape. It's that pretty dark blue. And I love the the that standard. I like having the fog lights, but those uh, black covers look cool on there too, and the black fins instead of chrome. So uh, yeah, that's a nice one. I really like the manuals. They run really good. I mean, not that the SE fives don't, but. It's just funny to ride, drive a manual. So anyway, that'll be on the Hero 4 session. The only thing I'm concerned with is if my voice was high enough through it, so this whole thing could be a bust. So, we'll see. Alright. That's, uh, that's going to be my vlog for the day. And, uh, I'll probably say bye or say hey or bore you on the way home. <laughs> I'll come up with something. If, if not, I'll... Uh, um, I'll throw in the, well, I'll just do that. I'll throw in the video of doing this now, and we'll see how that all works out. Hopefully the volume's good enough, because the Hero 4 session sits on my head, and it doesn't pick up the best volume. I don't want to scream. It's a showroom right there, you know, the customers looking around the corner, who the hell is that crazy guy you talking to? And it's just me being weird. You know, see me with a GoPro to my head and wondering what the hell I'm doing. So, hopefully the Hero 4 session thing works out. And uh, I'll show you that now. I don't show you going back together. Just It's just a reverse of taking it apart. So, uh, here that is. Here we go. Well, hello there, you two. You guys want to change oil on a twin? What year is this thing? 2012 RT standard manual. I love the manuals on these things. You guys may not be able to hear me very well, and I'm not going to scream and draw a bunch of attention down here. And this music in the background may, uh, ooh, our air pressure is low. Come 
I'll give you a helping hand here. Come on. Of course, my, uh, that's not the official way to lift a, a rack, in case you don't know. <laughs> so this is my little dribble rag. Our oil pan. All right, first thing. Ah, nice, it's not locked. He doesn't have the easy access panel, so this has to come off. Of course, he's over tightened his screws. Has a washer. A little short screw, no washer, another push pin, the ratcheting sound is the clutch, I'm not slipping on the bolt in case you're wondering. <laughs> I just over torque these who have worked on the last. This is a trade in, by the way. It was traded in on a 2015 Limited. Lift up and out. You gotta zip this little cover off here. The easy access one, you just had the two push pins and you loosen this one and it comes out. It's not bolted in the other places and you don't have to take that mid panel one out. So you got two push pins here. I just use this as a cup to capture stuff. A little tricky with the shift lever. and you always end up with the thing in gear when you're done. <laughs> Come on out of there now, don't be stubborn. And the one long one in the back. And this just gets pushed out of there. And I need a little... I take this pan out. There's a hole for draining it, but it just makes a huge mess. So I take this, that pan out. Hold the back of it with a 10 millimeter. And zap her out. And this one always get Oh, it's never been taken out before. There's a uh, there's a speed nut on there that's done during assembly that needs to be removed. And if you when you try to when you try to back it out, the speed nut just spins. So what you do is you whack it out. It doesn't hurt anything. stubborn. I'll show you what the speed nut looks like. And you don't put it back. Just take it out. It's done during assembly. It's just one of those speed nuts that zips on. But this is where people make the mistake. It seems like it'd make more sense to have the washer on the outside, but it doesn't. It goes on the inside against the metal, just the plain nut on the outside against the plastic. And then 
put that in the trash can. And then there's two uh, 10 millimeter headed six millimeter bolt against the frame underneath here. Let's reach under. There's one. Then the other. I just put those together so I know what that is. And there's a little wire tie right here that, that goes to the shift angle sensor. Just lift up and pop that out. And this just comes out of there. It's that little wire tie right there. And then because this grain bolt comes loose with kind of a snap, I don't use a ratchet on it, I use a cheater bar. Because it releases very quickly and it can rip the gears out inside of inside of a ratchet. Before I get all oily here, let's not uh, get ourselves with contaminated oil. There's one difference on this one that uh, that most of you are going to have, but, but this one does not. Is a HCM or a hydraulic control module filter, and it's the it's the uh, filter for the shift module. This one's missing it because it's a manual, so that's the only difference here. And I like to give it a little pre-wipe around the drain plug. Put your pan underneath there. Six millimeter. You want to make sure it goes all the way in. They're a deep, it's a deep bolt. See that? See how it pops like that? That'll gut your ratchet out after you do it a few times. This one has no magnetic tip on it. It's just a drain. Wow, the oil's clean in this thing. Guy must have changed it before he traded it in. But we don't know what kind of oil he used or anything, so she gets new oil. And on these twins, be careful you don't lose the O-ring. Because the O-ring tends to stick in that lip. So take your O-ring and pop it back down. Make sure it's on there. If it's not on there, it fell down. It's laying, <laughs> it's laying down there somewhere. But you can find it. All right, so this one's a little unique in that at this point, I usually do the, the tranny filter and do these two first, seal them up, and then I do the engine and uh, engine filter. Kind of a dark hole I got you in over here, isn't it? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna slip another pan under under this and or actually I'll just leave that one there and do the engine. So the engine drain is a little hidden on this one because it is a manual, because it's got a different um, override for the reverse. It's sitting in a different place. It's sitting right there. That's the mechanical switch that when you push the reverse button and click it in reverse, this pulls this and unlocks the shift drum to allow it to make a weird shift, which is reverse. So the drain plug is kind of hidden behind here, so I can't show you that. Maybe I can. But I have no idea if I got the camera angle correct. But there's the drain plug right there. If you can see that at all, I have no no earthly idea. And what I was telling you, I'll give you a visual here, to keep these things from stripping out, which people seem to manage to do in, well, do anyway. You can see where I've used this so much. Look how deep that goes in. Watch. It's a very deep Allen hole. Make sure you're all the way in on that thing. So. We're going to do the same with the engine here, but like I say, it's hidden from you. You can clearly see this on a FC5 model because it doesn't have that bracket for the reverse lockout. It's, it's in a different position, so you got to kind of 
do this a little by braille and this one will have a magnet on the tip and one of the things you want to take a peek at is uh, make sure there's no big chunks of metal floating on that thing depending on what it is it may be something serious or it may be something simple oh if you find a little piece of something on there email me I'll explain it to you double duty my new stuff and I throw the old stuff oh they got me the wrong kit it has uh, the filter for the transmission that's not there on this one yeah I already just pulled it out Take a, I just use a T handle. You can use a regular wrench or whatever. But you want to release your your oil filter. This is the engine oil filter. And if you do yourself a huge favor, don't do both filters at the same time. If you do, remember the engine. If you have an SE5, the bolts are longer for the little filter than they are for the main filter. I've seen people mix those things up and it ends in disaster because there's only like two threads holding the filter on and it comes out and while you're driving down the road you're losing oil and this filter sticks in the cover and when you go back together you gotta you gotta put it back the same way so this becomes my little catch bag with the junk we got a barrel over there we throw all this stuff in and it gets recycled there's no junk in this filter so no big worry there and like I say it looks like this thing's been recently changed so so Make sure all of that is clean inside there. There's no debris left. See that one's spotless. And you grab your, your new O-ring. You want to be careful putting this on that the O-ring doesn't pop off as you're putting it on. But your filter sticks in this cover. So you got to push it in to make sure it's level. And of course the hole is facing the engine. <laughs> it doesn't go in there. If it's not. Boost the air up here a little bit. Alrighty. So we have stopped up front here. Make sure there's no debris on our gasket surface area. And Get a shiny new brass washer. Do not reuse these. Absolutely guaranteed it'll leak. And I mean guaranteed it's going to leak. Do not try to reuse them. And that tank is slightly at an angle. I don't know if you can tell by that, but it's slightly at an angle. It's not perfectly straight up. So don't strip your threads out. falls down here Just scoop across and grab it and it gets on the plastic a little bit there so reach in there and clean that off
filter has stopped draining. So I like to reach in there and just clean the housing out, just in case there's any residue floating in there. And then of course, clean the o-ring groove in here make sure that doesn't have any debris in it or you'll get a weep you get this just a slow irritating leak that'll come out from underneath there and like I say when you're putting this on make sure that o-ring doesn't pop out up here probably hear horrifying shit music in the background that I gotta listen to all day apologize for that it's like five or six songs that repeat all day long reminds my me of my kids in Disney movies on VHS they just play that tape until the tape just finally broke <clears throat> all right engine same thing, make sure there's no debris on the surface area of the bolt or your washer. New washer on. And the same thing, reach underneath here, wipe around the ceiling area. And grab your little six millimeter. I'm gonna have to do a little braille again here. Spin it up till she seats by hand. And then it puddles oil on the reverse lockout cable bracket. So reach in here and clean that off. Or it'll drip and the customer will think you, you forgot to uh, tighten the drain bolt or something. And of course, wipe all around there for any residue that came out of the drain from the oil filter or uh, drain bolt and that's it and then make sure we're getting clean up there got my nifty difty little funnel here and this thing will take exactly four quarts and not even a half an ounce more. If you put any more in, it's pouring out. But it'll use more. It'll use up to four and a half quarts. Comes with five. This one? Oh, yeah, they did. She's looked real cool. tell when the weather's getting cooler, the oil pours slower. <laughs> As you can tell, my bench moves, I don't lock it down. Because I go up and down with it a lot. Oh, it slowly leaks air and just creeps down. It's always funny a customer come up and touch the bench and that's just the move a little bit that it needs to make a drop <laughs> it always freaks them out oh my god no ah, no you didn't do anything it's all right but dump the whole four quarts in i'll show you here at the end what i mean she is full it won't take any more than four quarts. But you gotta get her up to full temp. 
and uh, do the proper check and then add the balance out of the fifth quart that comes in the box. And you should be using this oil. Comes in a complete kit. I want you to see where the oil level is in this thing. Can you tell where that's at? <laughs> it's right at the bottom of the threads. And your sealer off and run her up to temp. Alright, that's it. Other than getting it up to full temp, this should be 100, I'd say 126 up here at the tank but if you measure down here it's actually in the 130s it, it needs to be the full temp which will be slightly higher than that but for changing like this and the engine's already hot already warmed it up so it won't take long to warm up so uh that's it you'll reassemble but this is the uvi so i got other things to check battery pose belt tension got other servicing items to do but that's an oil change on an rt the uh, 991 or the 998 cc twin the only difference would be you have an extra filter on the se5 which most people have and it's just a matter of pulling the filter out and putting another one in and uh, no oil needs to be no difference with the oil it's kind of the same procedure but that's it all right we'll see you appreciate you guys watching take care now <laughs> bye bye well hello there youtube this is, uh, as you can see, the sunsets are <laughs> really close. 6.06 6 is uh, sunset tonight. So the days are getting, well, obviously shorter. I don't, I don't, I don't text going down the road. I just look to see who's saying what. Oh, look at this rain cloud right here. That one's looking, that one's looking pretty threatening. You know, I'm not sure, but I think, I think I might have left work early today. I remember looking up at the clock to see what time it was. I think I might have got <laughs> I might have got closed up and left early. I shouldn't be where I'm at at this time. Oh, a weird thing. This morning I wake up to my Windows 10 laptop telling me that a daylight savings time had already happened. And I can't figure out how it's coming up with that, but it's showing an hour early. Or so I don't know. We'll be riding tomorrow, and uh, we're gonna take the old venture for a ride. I did. There's a, a vlog I haven't. Oh, well, those beautiful skies out that way. I did a vlog on the venture. I took it out with the uh, um, Sino waterproof thing, and I think it rained on me a little bit. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. I don't remember. Anyway, I did take the Venture out. I haven't looked at any of that footage, so I have no idea if it's any good or not. So, uh, we'll see what happens with that. But, uh, anyway, I just wanted to come on and say goodbye for the day. With my very red face. That is, like, tripping the white balance out. But, um, or at least that's the way it looks like on the, on the screen to me. That, uh, artificial light is, like... But you get over it. I, I'm, I don't have rosacea or anything like that. Just a white balance thing. 
But anyway, um, I wanted to thank you guys for watching the the V twin spider oil change. Um, I was gonna try to do it with this camera, but man, I gotta have two hands, and I just thought, man, I just be cumbersome trying to go step by step and then pull this camera out, do another step, and then point out what I'm doing. I thought, well, I'll just throw the Hero 4 session, excuse me, on my head. Gotta show you this. Thought I'd just throw that Hero 4 session on my head and uh, see if that thing would pick up the audio. If you're watching this, it picked the audio up. I don't know how bad this is going to be. Because that Hero 4 session is pretty quiet. There's a lot of ambient noise in our shop. So there's a good chance that uh, it didn't pick my voice up. I, did, I, I knew if I talked really loud it would come across. But uh, there was customers. Customers out on the floor out there looking at quads and stuff. And, you know, that would just be too weird. Draw too much attention. So, uh... Uh, and I couldn't wait. I have other things to do. So I had to get that, that thing done. So I thought, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So if, you, uh, if you're if you watching this after the oil change, thank you very much. <laughs> um, otherwise, you would never know anything about this. And I'm literally talking to the, the memory molecules on a silicone wafer inside this this camera but uh, anyway I'm, uh, I'm gonna let you go on that typical straight away down uh, 505 oh keep you keep you pointing on me here on 505 heading home so uh, I'm gonna roll out and I want to thank you guys for watching and uh, appreciate all the comments of everything you guys have been doing a lot of comments here lately and I appreciate all the likes I've been getting a high number of likes here lately um, I threw a little little tidbit of thing. I'm sure I, I think it's kind of cheesy, but um, I hate asking for likes. I thought, well, maybe if I just throw this cheesy little thing on there saying subscribe and like, maybe that would help. I don't know if that's helping remind you guys to like it or what. You know, when I watch like the guys that I follow, look, even if I don't comment or anything, if, if I take the time to turn the video on and watch it, I like it. Immediately I go, boom, I hit the thumbs up. So uh, that's important. That gives the video relevance and it makes YouTube pay attention to it. So if you like it, please hit the like button. If you don't, it helps if you hit the dislike too. It shows activity with the video. So if you don't like it, thumbs down it. Honestly, uh, there's one person that does it on every one of my videos. So whoever you are, thank you very much. <laughs> don't know why. This all started when I mentioned, you know, hitting the don't like once. And then all of a sudden I get a don't, uh, don't like on every single video. But anyway, thank you guys very much. And uh, I'll be vlogging tomorrow. So we'll talk to you through that. So have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye-bye now.